Donington? Yes? I'm Detective Seller. This is Detective Torino. Wait a minute. What is this? You know whose apartment this is? Of course. It belongs to a girl I met in the library. Name of, name of Nancy Wood. I don't, don't know where she's disappeared to, but... At 1.10 a.m., a woman who identified herself as Nancy Wood came into the precinct station and alleged that you assaulted her. That you were drunk and you struck her in the face with your fist in her own apartment. I never struck a woman in my life. Someone struck this woman. She had a black eye. I couldn't have done that. Then you tell us what happened here. I... Well, I don't know. But look, officers, this is all a mistake. My name's Roger Darlington. I know that doesn't mean much here in New York. Not like it does down home, home? but... where's that? Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. How long you been in the city, Mr. Darlington? About three months. But look, I'm sure if you'll check, you'll find that my reputation is 100%. I I've never been in any kind of trouble. You are now, mister. Get his coat. <laughs> Wait a minute. Please, officers. Isn't there something, anything we can do about this? Some way I can... Square the beef? You trying to bribe us, mister? No, no, please, of course not. But surely there must be some Face way... Face it, Darlington. It's a felony assault. But if, if you can convince some judge you didn't know what you were doing, he might let you off with a light sentence. No, but the... no, this can't happen to me. It already has. Look, mister, we gotta go in. Come on. Wait, wait. Please try to understand the position I'm in. It's not just my own reputation I'm worried about. My grandfather, he's head of the business. He's old school Southern, and this would kill him and ruin me. Your grandfather, huh? Joe, think uh, we could maybe give him a break? Wow. It's up to the girl. Think she'd withdraw her complaint? Yes, yes, that's it. I'll make up for what I did to her. Whatever she wants, I'll make it up to her. It's dangerous, Vince. I'll make it worth your while. Look, mister, we don't take bribes. If we do anything, it'll be for Miss Wood, not for you, understand? Go ahead, Joe. See if you can talk to her. But be careful. too much. Why? She hasn't said yes yet. It'll cost you a grand, Mr. Darlington. A thousand dollars? Mm-hmm. That's what the lady said. What choice have you got? All right. I'll have to get it from the office. All right, we'll drive you there. It's a lot of money. So, just figure you've learned a lesson. A lesson? Yeah. Ladies don't like black guys. Get in, Joe. Step number one. On the 17th day of November, year not specified, I went to the wig shop on 46th Street to meet Special Investigator Shannon. I'm Albert Bonacorsi, Assistant District Attorney, New York City, Borough of Manhattan. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Al. Had to wait for a wire. No complaints, as long as the coffee holds out. You up on the report? Everything except why did this Roger Darlington decide to spill the story to the DA after all? The boys touched him again. Said the girl wanted more money. And he paid? Had to. But he figured out the setup by then. Mark fellow. He decided if cops were in on it, maybe he'd better help us clean house. So we talked. He checked out the two detectives? Yeah, they were phonies, okay. 
Darlington found that hard to believe. Kept saying he saw Trina go into the precinct station to talk to the girl. You think they're back in operation already? Looks like it. The girl is hanging around the library again. So far, she hasn't found a setup. I take it she will when I move in. Right. If we're lucky, you'll be the next sucker. If we run the gang down, do you think Darlington will testify against them? I don't know. A lot of lonely men have been taken by this bunch. Most of them are too embarrassed to talk. Those who do talk, like Darlington, won't prosecute. They're afraid of the publicity. OK, Al. I'll check with Carney if I get lucky. Watch yourself. These shakedown artists are running a big money operation. They'll play rough, do anything to keep it going. I'm not much worried about two phony cops. The big problem is the girl. What do you mean? I've always had trouble with blondes. <laughs> Oh, never mind. I beg your pardon, miss, but are you sure my article hasn't come down yet? What article was that, sir? The role of artillery in the Battle of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania Historical Quarterly, Fall 1947. Would you mind keeping your voice down, sir? Please? Oh, yes, ma'am. Beg your pardon. I don't seem to find your request for that, sir. Well, you must have it, ma'am. I wrote it down on one of them little old slips like you told me. Please, I'll check. I always heard these Yankees were so efficient. Leave you standing here for hours, wouldn't they? Down home, we just get our own books off the shelf. Here's your book, miss. Thank you. Say, don't I detect just a wee bit of magnolia in your accent? Well, if I haven't lost it all. I knew a girl as pretty as you'd have to come from somewhere down south. Private conversations are not allowed in the reading room. Please, your article will be down in just a moment. Yes, ma'am. Where about you from? Georgia. Atlanta. See, that's a coincidence, too. I'm from Albany, Georgia. Is that so? Why don't we sit down? Why, we're practically neighbors. Albany's only 159 miles due south on Route 19. You ever been there? Well, I've, uh, I've driven through. That's about all anybody ever does. There's not much to stop for. I'm up at the University of Athens most of the time, but I spent a lot of time in Atlanta. We probably got mutual friends there. You go to Athens or Tech? If you wish to talk, you'll have to leave the reading room. Sorry. Look, why don't we rebels go somewhere where we can talk? No, really, I, I don't Oh, think why I... not? Look, I can see you're not the kind of girl who'd let herself be picked up just by any stranger. But this is different. We're practically neighbors. Well, I, I'd like to talk to you, but I really shouldn't. It'll only be talk. Give you my word as a southern gentleman. Well, 
take you anywhere you want to go. You just name it. Well, there's an automat across the street on 42nd. How about that? Coffee's good. Lead the way. You're right. This room's bad for talking. You know why? Why? There's an echo. <laughs> yes, sir. Maxwell T. Armstead does all right. Is that your name? That's my father. I'm Harvey P. Mm. It's big business, all right. Want a piece of pie? No, thanks. I bet you'd be surprised how much one of these machines I'm looking for costs. I bet I would. And I can't find the right one at any price. All that money just sitting in the bank waiting. Never knew it was so hard to spend. Can't even find a city slicker to take it away from me. How do you know I'm not one? Oh, sure, some slicker. One 10 cent cup of coffee, no cream. Can't even tempt you with a piece of pie. My figure. There's nothing wrong with your figure. And let's keep it that way. You wouldn't have noticed me if I was the kind of nibble pie this time of the night. And speaking of this time of the night, I've got to go. Can't I take you home? The agreement was for coffee and talk only, remember? But there can't be any harm the in it. The answer is no, Mr. Armstead. But I don't even know your name or where you live. My name is Nancy Wood, and where I live doesn't matter. If we should meet again, it'll be at the library. At least give me your phone number, or tell me where you work or how I can get in touch with you. I want to take you out some nice place sometime, dancing, something like that. Are you sure you're not the city slicker? After all, you did pick me up, and we're still comparative strangers. Miss Wood, you've just got to take pity on a lonely stranger. I mean, we just can't meet like this and pass on by like it was nothing. What I'm trying to say is, Miss Wood, I like you. Good night. Thanks for the coffee. Working kind of late, Mr. Darlington. No, it's you. What do you want? Girl wants more money, five grand this time. I won't pay. She's threatening to go to the inspector, spill the whole thing. I don't care. I might just do that myself. I don't think you will. Why not? You're about to lose your voice. They're beginning to look at me suspiciously. Another few minutes and I'd been picked up on a vagrancy charge. She didn't show up? No, but she will, tonight. I doubt it. Why? Roger Darlington's in the hospital. He was jumped in his office last night. Beaten badly. His safe was rifled to $7,000. Two phony cops? Probably. We won't know for sure until Darlington wakes up. But if so, the gang may lay low for a while. Might even leave town. I don't think so. Like Al said, this is a smart operation. Even 7,000 is not such a killing for them. Maybe you should have tailed her last night, found out where she lives. That would have shot the whole deal. This dame's help. 
She just spotted a tail on the first block. You really think she'll show up tonight? I'll give odds on it. And when she does, you better be around to back me up. I might need some help. I'll be there. Just remember, I don't know you. And if she stands you up, don't feel bad. I'm banking on one thing. What? My southern charm. Miss Wood, you came back. Yes. I'm sure glad. Well, I got to thinking, after all, we are from the same state, and maybe I owe you some hospitality. I'm all for hospitality. What nightclub will it be? Oh, I really don't care much for nightclubs. I guess I'm still pretty much a small-town girl. That's okay. I don't like them so much myself. I'd rather just go someplace quiet where we can talk, wouldn't you? Well, the automat isn't exactly a mausoleum, but... Well, I have a suggestion to make. Well, that is if you wouldn't think I was too bold. Now, how could I think that? Well, we'd have a better chance to chat if we spent a quiet evening at my place. We could have a drink and listen to some music. It sounds great. Well, I'd never suggest such a thing, but... I'm expecting a call from home. I certainly wouldn't want to disappoint the home folks. Let's go. Oh, well, it's understood, isn't it, Mr. Armstead, that this is just a friendly chat and nothing more? Miss Wood, I'll make a bargain with you. What? You're safe if I am. part of Atlanta did you live in? North side, near Maddox Park. Oh, yeah, it's nice up there. I used to visit out south, mostly, out near the federal prison. You know that end of town? No, not much. What's a girl like you do in New York? Do? Like for a living. Oh, the usual thing. Secretary. Doesn't it get kind of lonely? It did at first. But then you get used to it? You get acquainted. Make friends. Mmm, you mix a good drink. Mmm, it's a spot. Why don't you sit here? I'll sit over here. Mm. See. Mm. What were we talking about? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Atlanta. Hmm. That was quick. Why not? Get it over with fast. What's eating you, sister? Nothing. I got such nice friends, that's all. Go on.
What is this? You're under arrest, all of you. District Attorney's office. Well, well. Lumpy Biano and Hips Morgan. So you're the two phony cops. We thought you quit playing games. And who are you? Now, wait a minute, officers. You can't arrest me. I'm a decent citizen. These people are trying to pull some kind of crooked game on me. What do you mean? She tried to dope me with a drink, and then she let these fellows in. This the drink? I may be from the country, honey, but it's a good bourbon country, and I've got a taste for it. Sure lost this one. Oh, shut up. How'd you cops just happen to get here so fast anyway? We've been following Cornpone here. We figured he was heading for trouble when he met up with you in the library. I told you that gag was getting stale. All right, let's go, all of you. You too. Me? What do you want me for? You'll have to sign a complaint. Not me, not in this town. I'm leaving in a couple of days. I don't want to get mixed up with the police. Get yourself another boy. There goes your case, copper. Have another guess, Biano. What do you mean? Remember a guy called Roger Darlington? Never heard of him. He's heard of you. He's just itching to get out of the hospital so he could testify against you and your pals here. You made a mistake when you pushed him too hard. Stupid jerks. Don't go throwing names around, Magnolia. You made a mistake, too. When? When you turned down a noisy nightclub for a quiet evening at home. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 